If you've ever used AI to write some of your code, or are thinking about getting started with AI to write some new programs, you're watching the right video. Using AI to code is like hiring the world's fastest digital bricklayer. And like any good worker, AI will build you something, it just might not be what you expect. Let's look at how and when to use AI productively in your projects, a couple of analogies to differentiate programming versus coding. Programming is like being an architect. You think big picture. Is this a house or is this a barn? Is this a single story? Does it have a basement? Where's the bathroom? How do all the other rooms connect? The architect designs the blueprint. A coder is like a bricklayer or other tradesperson, such as plumber or electrician. They follow a plan and execute with skill and precision. They know the ins and outs of their trade. Just like in construction, the larger and more complex your program gets, the more need there is to have an architect to keep it all under control. Because here's the catch. Without a blueprint, the bricklayer doesn't know where to build the wall. If you ask a plumber to install a toilet and the plumber has no blueprint to understand where it goes, you may end up with a toilet in your kitchen. If you decide you want a basement in your house, well, AI will happily remove the floor to dig you a basement, but it may not put the floor back thinking, that's not needed. These kind of problems get larger and larger the more complex your program gets. Now, not every project needs blueprints and an architect. If you're just painting a wall in the house, paint the wall. And if it happens to be the wrong color, you'll redo it without too much hassle. This is vibe coding territory. If you want to create a program to turn a lamp on and off, say, AI, make me a program to turn my lamp on and off. And if it doesn't work, you just have AI rewrite that code. These small, low-risk projects are like your DIY weekend projects. You won't destroy the house, and AI acts as a knowledgeable best friend who is helping you out with whatever project it is. And furthermore, if you pay attention to how AI lays down the code, you can gain insights as to how to be a better architect for some of those larger projects. Once your project grows, has multiple features, or interacts with other programs and so on, you really need to step into those architect's shoes and plan your foundation and to make this program both usable in the near term, but also that it can grow in the long term. Because if you just keep saying AI add this or change that, you end up with code that is not human readable and you wouldn't be able to tell if AI deletes or removes something that you didn't want it to delete or remove. Before we wrap up this video with a few key takeaways, if you're interested in actually applying AI to change code, follow the channel. In our next video, we are going to be adding features to our 3D printed smart lamp using nothing but AI coding. So to recap, what is AI good for? AI is good for speeding up your workflow, bringing you to focus on other aspects of the program. AI is good as a learning aid, basically allows you to learn on the go. It's sort of like a apprenticeship. Troubleshooting is another great use of AI. You used to have to ask questions and wait for someone to respond. Now you can have the response immediately to any troubleshooting item that you run into. And lastly, you can learn creative solutions to problems. This is sort of a pro and con for AI because you always want to increase your problem solving skills. If you rely on AI too much, you'll actually reduce your problem solving skills. The cons for AI, it's not good for enterprise or complex programs. There's just too much risk of things getting deleted or not functioning as expected. AI can produce a false confidence in the code that it outputs. You may think it's going to do what you want it to do, but you may not get expected results in all circumstances. Code readability is also a big issue with AI. The more you ask it to change and the more you ask it to do, it happily does, but for a human to go in and read that code and understand what it's doing is almost impossible as projects grow in size. And lastly, if you have been a programmer over time, you can slowly reduce your ability to write code from scratch. Not a great thing and really not a great thing if you start also relying on AI as a crutch for your problem solving skills. That's enough talk for today. We're looking to actually apply AI to a real project in our next video. Thanks for watching and have a great day.